Well, welcome everyone. Uh, I am Dr. David Lurcher from the School of Information and uh, San Jose State University. And, and today we welcome you to, uh, uh, to meet a, a, a wonderful person, Molly Detman from Norman, Oklahoma. And uh, so we're just delighted to have you with us, Molly. Uh, do introduce yourself a little more uh, about yourself and, and your school. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Um, so my name is Molly Detman. I am a school library, a teacher librarian at Norman North High School in Norman, Oklahoma. In my school district, there are two main high schools, and so I'm one at one of them. And I am going into my sixth year as a school librarian. Before that, I was I worked in public libraries and teen services for four years prior. So that. Um, I mean, I always love school visits and I always love, love going to the school. So then it was a really lovely transition where then I was able to really work with our public library partners more easily because I already I knew that life. And then I you know joined the school life. So um, really love working with students, especially high schoolers. They're little goobers, but <laughs> they're so much fun to work with and to teach and to share that love of reading and um, I, and I, um, incoming, or I'm the current chair of our Oklahoma School Librarians Division, so I'm very, very involved in our state and national library organizations. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, you belong to this Norman School District, who have had wonderful school libraries for decades. So you've been, you know, they've been at the top forever and ever. So uh, today, uh, let's examine, you know, from the point of view of leadership, you know, that, uh, you know, I, I know that you know how to reach out to faculty and departments and all of that stuff. Describe to us how you develop this trust uh, so that you get lots, uh, lots of done collaboratively. Well, a lot of it just comes down to just being really knowledgeable about what's going on. Um, I mean, right now, especially in Oklahoma and all around the country, there's teacher shortages. We have people who are joining the profession who don't have maybe traditional teaching backgrounds or prior, like they have the college degrees, but not like in education. So um, about my third, fourth year teaching, I made myself um, our new teacher liaison. We have a new teacher liaison program in my district. And so I made sure I was like our site contact so I could work directly with brand new teachers who come from all sorts of different backgrounds, whether, you know, they just came from student teaching to, um, you know, the backgrounds I just mentioned so that then I could be a support and just kind of learn what their needs were just to like make them feel more comfortable in the school, just get comfortable teaching and just getting kind of in the flow of things. And then also just being knowledgeable about their content. So like from English to social studies to math, I mean, it's hard to like, you know, off the top of your head, know every single standard and every single unit that's coming up. But I just made it a point to like really talk to the teachers at my school. It's a pretty big school, but it, so it took some time, but just really made myself knowledgeable about what was going on so I could be that that support to teachers. So whether, I mean, I then, you know, directly was able to collaborate and work with them, or I just offered them resources that then helped them out in, you know, a unit or a lesson or something that they were teaching um, it was, that's kind of how I've really gotten in like working with those new teachers so that then, you know, they stay with us and then want to work with the library more once they get more comfortable and more in the groove of their teaching. So that's kind of been my uh, big way to get in with the most teachers and most departments, because I mean, unfortunately though, we do have so many new teachers that have come every year, but every year they stay with us. I'm like, yay, let's now do some more fun stuff. So really uh, uh, direct support of, of those uh, folks as you partner with them. Give us some, uh, a couple of examples of some actual learning experiences that you've, uh, you've uh, per partnered uh, in uh, that uh, show the difference that uh, the additional uh, uh, content and, and skills that you're, you're working with the, the, the kids simultaneously with what their, their goals and objectives are. Yeah, so um, one way I kind of got in with like our math department was we had a brand new math teacher, you know, got to know her a little better. She really wanted, she had these big ideas for these cool like hands-on math thing, math um, lessons and activities and needed a bigger space. And it was like, well, the library is a great place, but let's like work together on this and see what we can kind of do together. So um, from that um, 
just kind of talking to each other, we came up with um, it was a really cool Star Wars math escape room. So it was like the students were doing the math. We had the stations all set up. They were all Star Wars themed. Um, and they were solving like it was geometry. So they were solving like the circumference of like different circle related <laughs> math geometry um, concepts. And then um, we had Sphero Star Wars robots that then the kid, then once they like solved all the math, they got to then like program and play with, ro I mean, play, but really they were programming and working with angles and maneuvering their little uh, robots through a little obstacle course in the library classroom. So that was really fun. And then it also then, you know, turned into that teacher ended up leaving. She went to a different state. But then the other math teachers were like, this is cool. We can work with the library. So then I've, and there's a big uh, geometry project that one of our te freshman teachers does, does every year where um, the students, they build, well, they, they create castles. And then they have, and these castles have to have so many geometric shapes, and then they have to measure the surface area and volume of the shapes oh. and the castle, which like that's evolved each year. So like even this year, um, most of the students actually, we I worked with them to help them create their design Tinkercad so that then we could 3D print their models. But then they also make cardboard models at a, on a larger scale and all of that. So all within the library, super fun math. That was a really fun way where just like an energetic teacher who wanted to space. Now it's turned into a longer collaboration, more deeply embedded within the math department. And then I've done some cool research units with some of the other math teachers. And so that it's just, it's opened up a lot of doors because especially math, like I for sure never would have really thought library and math would have gone together, but I have such right. a better appreciation for it. And then another thing that was kind of cool. So sometimes, I mean, I will say uh, classroom teachers, I mean, they get, you know, once you get to the year started, even if you hear a new cool idea, sometimes it's really hard to implement it because you're just like so overwhelmed with like just getting through the content, getting through the year, surviving at this point. So then something, sometimes like if I have a cool idea or maybe I go to a workshop or maybe I go somewhere and learn something, I'll bring it back. I'll kind of build it together. And then I'll go to the teachers and say like, Hey, I have this thing, April 26, you want to come to the library and we'll have a good time. And so I did that with my Oklahoma history teachers. I had kind of a big, I had, well, I had one teacher actually, she walked by and she was like, I'd really like to do more with civil rights. And that's, <laughs> that's literally all she said is she like went to her room after, after she got her coffee and I was like okay so I like you know did some research looked into the standards looked into what I had learned previously from previous professional development and then put together a little like fun day for each of the teachers to come and I had what was I called them primary source puzzles I got like they were primary source pictures of civil rights leaders in Oklahoma I printed them out I put them on um mod podge them on scraps of cardboard because I put that geometry project I had a lot of cardboard um and then I went to my public library because I knew they had a laser cutter and laser cut puzzles out of them so I got a bunch of puzzles because the idea was they would put the puzzles together and they'd have to match the description with the civil rights leader and then I had this really awesome picture book by, about Clara Looper that they all read together and then I worked with our Oklahoma Historical Society to get I always saw that they had these traveling trunks of like museum artifacts and museum panels. And I always thought it was really for elementary, but then I was like, no, this is cool. I'll go pick it up. And so then the like last half of the hour would be them exploring the museum artifacts and the museum panels. And so I did that with each of the teachers and like one teacher who super, super nice, but like never, you know, never reached out. Like we have so many teachers that sometimes once you build up that we do cool stuff and look how your kids can learn will come to us and be like, hey, I want to do this. But a lot of times you do have to like really show it to that teacher and just bring them in. So I said, can you just give me one day, just bring your kids and this will be cool. And he came and now he's coming to like our summer uh, training to like learn some more about how we can better embed the library with a bigger research project on this topic. So sometimes like, you have to do kind of the groundwork first and like build something, which really like that idea came from a workshop I went to that said, trunks are, these trunks are a thing and the Oklahoma civil rights here are some primary sources and then I just kind of and I honestly I think even the puzzle thing really like I'm sure people have done that before I mean I will say laser cutting puzzles with an endeavor <laughs> you could also just print them out and cut up cut up pieces that would probably be a lot easier but they did held up nice in the cardboard 
Um, but I think I did another training where we did that. We like put a puzzle together and then it was like, what does this image mean? So it just got the kids like thinking and using their hands instead of just like staring at a screen. So, I mean, we didn't even actually use technology at all for, for that particular lesson. Whereas then, you know, with the geometry one, we're 3D designing and doing all sorts of stuff. So I like a little bit of both because my teachers also like a nice mix of all of it. So I just have to be open to just trying new things and seeing if they'll like it. You know, I, it sounds like you really made use of a lot of technology to to make learning what <laughs> engaging. Uh, you see this in the students as you as as you uh, tell us about the role that technology plays in in helping kids <laughs> learn <laughs> instead of right. just sit there and take notes and and, and fill in quizzes. Right. Well, I mean, I think I see a lot of, I mean, I just, I tried, I'm very fortunate that I've learned from school library mentors who made a, a priority to seek out new technology and see how it can fit in. So then, I mean, I'm always kind of on the lookout for things. Uh, one new piece of technology that I've really worked to embed in my practice is virtual reality. So, I mean, virtual reality you know, it's cool. Not every student can do it, but so I've really incorporated as more of a station within larger activities. So like for a research unit I've done with our 10th grade English classes um, on the sustainable, uh, the UN um, global goals, they, we kind of explored it. We read different books, we explore different images. We're all looking at like we're having the students look at the world and issues that are happening, but how maybe can we can help with those issues. And virtual reality has been really cool. So we have I have several headsets where then there are different apps. I mean, I got I got a grant for several of the apps. Like one has them like swim in the ocean, which the ocean is just that's always everyone wants the question about the ocean. That's everyone's favorite global goal is life under sea. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's also some where like they go. There's one called Ecospheres that I used where. Uh, it has several different like mini documentaries, but then you also like when you put it on, you see the little world and you, then you see Columbia and then you get little mini documentaries to learn about issues and things happening in Columbia and um, a couple other countries that are featured in that particular app so that then um, students get to like actually be in <laughs> that country as opposed, I mean, like we're not gonna be able to, you know, take it out to Columbia, but um, they can actually still explore and, and I mean and it's kind of it's fun and interesting at first like it's just kind of like oh this is cool but then they like learn something from it oh. um, like I did another one um, the lesson the you the research unit the theme was empathy and so when we I used you know technology and empathy I was like well how can we use tech so I also bring it back to them like how can we use technology to empathize with others here are some examples and so then you know the apps I have for that are like Anne Frank House, which a lot of kids had read. So then it was like, wait, her house is really that small? Because again, we're not able to take them all on a plane to Amsterdam. There was one, it was so beautiful. There's one app called Notes um, Blindness, where this man, he, back in the 80s, he started losing his vision and he recorded, he did like a, a oral, like a recorded diary of his experience. And then when you put the app on, you can kind of see what his limited vision was like as you're listening to the wow. diary and I, I had a girl like she listened to it and this was a student who like was not feeling any of the other like, we also read picture books we also listened to stories like there are a couple other things we did but she was really not feeling it until that virtual reality experience and I like saw her the next day and I said hey would you like it and she goes that was the most profound experience I've ever had I've never like I would have never known what somebody was going through who was losing their vision and I was like like tear like I was just like oh you got it that's great but it's that technology that flashiness that kind of gets them hooked in but then it 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 takes like some research and some looking into I'm again really fortunate I really got to learn more about um, the benefits of that through librarians I've met through online and at conferences that have you know researched and done a lot of work for this to where then I was able to kind of take and, and then build and do kind of my own stuff with it as well. That's so wonderful. So um, let, I mean, you do so many wonderful things. How do you uh, document uh, for administrators, boards, parents, you know, this whole, this whole program that you're talking about? What kind of evidence do you collect or disseminate uh, of, 
of your role in, in these exciting learning experiences? I do a couple of different things. So base level, like whenever I'm teaching a lesson or I'm doing something, um, our school uses Canvas as our learning management system. So it's very easy for me to, like, you know, build a reflection or an assessment in Canvas, give it to that teacher and then have access to see the student responses. I think it's really important to, I mean, sometimes it might even be as simple as like, what did you learn? Because sometimes our my lessons are more ex extensions of what the teachers are doing, so they don't necessarily need to take a hard grade on it. But I do with I would like feedback. Sometimes I even do like a sticky note on the door on their way out of like, what was one cool thing you learned? What was one thing you uh, yeah. wish we had done different? And I mean, with the stations with Oklahoma history, I had a little whiteboard. And I had them tally which station they liked the best, just to kind of get a sense of like where was there, where could I maybe beef up and build more on and and focus on another aspect, uh, other lessons and other curriculum. So, so I do a lot do of that. You, do you do some kind of report to administrators and parents or whatever? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, that's just kind of like class by class seeing how things go. Yeah. I do a quarterly report and an annual report. So, I mean, the quarterly report is a real quick snapshot. Like maybe this is how many grants we won this quarter, how many um, different subjects we taught. Um, how many books were checked out, kind of little snapshots of that. The larger annual report um, ties directly to the a AASL school librarian standards and kind of does some highlights, some numbers, things like that. And then also I like to put what goals I have for the next year in the annual report. Um, I have those all archived on the library website so that, I mean, you can go back as far as when I first started to see what the library did that year and what we're highlighting. Um, I also have a really big um, uh, social media presence with my school library. So at Norman North Library on Facebook and Instagram, I haven't branched out to too many other social media platforms just because at that point it gets really overwhelming. Um, but my kids really use Instagram, so I can reach them that way. And then a lot of adults definitely still use Facebook. So those posts, so, I mean, I might do a post where it has like some, you know, action shots of us doing Oklahoma history stations. Um, I try hard not to put students' faces in them just because I just have kind of the action shots so that, um, you know, no one's privacy is being violated. It's just kind of like, like it's very easy to like have a picture of hands doing the puzzle and you can see the music and like the back of the kid's head looking at a museum panel, like you can still do fun action shots showing that the kids are learning and engaging and then sharing those pictures within a post. So like I might have a post, like I usually do posts highlighting different lessons we've done. I might do one on like the different research questions students came up with during a research unit. And sometimes it's also just like highlighting services like, hey, did you know that your librarians can, can uh, curate a wakelet of resources for you on anything you'd like? Ta-da. <laughs> yeah. um, and I mean, I've had teachers, no matter how many times I've told them like to their face, like, hey, the library can do this. Then they'll see it on Facebook and they'll be like, I want that. Sure. So it's kind of about reaching, you know, users where their information needs are. So social media is a big way too that I've promoted the library and, and the resources and services that we provide. That's absolutely wonderful. So uh, if I were a superintendent or principal or a board, school board member, and I really wanted to have this kind of dynamic, absolute library program in my school, what advice would you give me for uh, uh, making this happen? Well, first, have a certified school librarian, like have a full-time person who has that time and is a dedicated staff. That is what they do. They're not seven for people. They're not also teaching three English classes. Like they are the school librarian, get a dedicated person first and first foremost. And then honestly, I would also say um, invest in their professional development. Like you could have like the coolest person ever. Like you can learn so much online, but I've also just learned so much by being able to go to conferences and then also share what I'm doing and learn from others and meet people from all over the country that then you know, they improve my practices because I kind of take what they're doing in their library. So if you want to have a super dynamic, you have to let your librarian and support your librarian and learn in their own professional development and learning. That's wonderful. So let's just think, what is the bottom line of all this? The library 
uh, as as you see it happening in in the world of education now, what is your bottom line to all of this? I mean, I the library supports all students. So I think it's just so important to have, you know, fully certified staff and budget and, you know, then there'll be just so much more that students can experience and learn from because they have that important piece in their school. Like, I mean, if you don't have a school librarian, you're missing out on just, you know, increased literacy, increased learning opportunities. I mean, I pull in so many like community and or other organizations that a regular classroom teacher just doesn't have the time to do, or if they, they do, it's still only within their one class. So that is great for them that they have reached out and done that. But then what about the rest of the classes and what about the rest of the students? Um, school librarians, I mean, school libraries create kind of an equal, equal opportunity for access of information and reading and all sorts of things. So I think it's important to invest in them and to, um, you know, honor what they do. Don't make them do other things or just don't like get rid of them because you think, oh, well, we can just have a classroom library or, oh, we can just, we just have really good teachers. So we're fine. Like librarians enhance what the teachers are doing. Like it just makes everything better. Why wouldn't you want to have the best educational opportunities for all students? Right. Molly, you're absolutely tremendous. And so I know that your teachers and your students love you and and uh, trust you and and are involved in in uh, all that you do. And so uh, I want to say thank you on behalf of of those your audience there, but also our our viewers here. That uh, we want more Molly Detmans in every school <laughs> in the country and internationally. So. We appreciate your time so very much. And so we'll say thank you, thank you, thank you, and, and bid you uh, 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 well, and uh, uh, just appreciate your time and effort and all you do. Well, thank you so much for having me and for what you're doing as well. All right. Bye-bye.